testing? Perfect. Sounds good. Hi, good morning. Welcome everyone. My name is Jessica Finkoven. I'm the director of the Mayor's Office of Sustainability and Environment. One of the main roles of our office is developing programs to reduce our climate impacts and keep us moving towards our goal of being a carbon neutral city. It can certainly be a challenging job, but with the mayor and city leadership so committed to protecting our residents from climate change, it's also uh, quite rewarding. With the federal government doing all they can to move us backward on climate change, I'm thankful to be part of a local government that will continue to move us forward. The actions Mayor Durkin will announce shortly were created in partnership with community stakeholders. And while I can't recognize everyone by name, I do want to acknowledge and thank the community leaders, the business leaders, and our many city departments and city staff for being partners in this work. And I'm pleased to introduce Mayor Jenny Durkin. Throughout her career, Mayor Durkin has been at the front lines fighting for clean air and water, and she has held environmental polluters accountable. Now as mayor, she's working to implement solutions to reduce pollution, to center equity, and to build a climate-friendly city. Without further ado, Mayor Durkin. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. You guys can have a drip line. I know, yeah, it's part of my look. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you coming. Uh, I think when we're talking about the great environment that Seattle has, we should be outside in that environment. And this is our perfect liquid environment. Um, and it's, I think, really wonderful to be uh, at one of the prettiest overlooks in the city of Seattle. Um, I think one that even featured on Fraser, if I'm not mistaken. I want to thank Councilmember O'Brien um, for being here. His leadership on all these issues over years has really moved our city forward in a lot of ways, and I've been working with him and, and look forward to continuing to work with him. Um, he is a catalyst for many changes. We have robust discussions and truly enjoy working together on these issues. Uh, Cary Park, I think, is another special thing because it gives us a view of really the heart of the city not just the Space Needle and the urban environment, but the sound that we live on, the Salish Seas. And we know that our city has to protect the environment. We have come far, but we know that our battle for, against climate change is one that has to be very urgent. We know that the current administration has taken us backwards, and that if there is going to be leadership on these issues, it has to come from state and local governments. I think the greatest actions will come from local and city governments, the urban environment where people are living, and I think Seattle is that city poised to lead on our environmental changes and the battle against climate change. Unlike President Trump, we actually believe in science in the Pacific Northwest. We know that fossil fuels are not the energy of the future. The quicker we can distance ourselves from them and come up with alternative energy, the better we will be, not just for our local environment, but for the whole globe. So we have a number of things that we are um, going to be working on this week and have announced. Uh, we know that number one thing that we have to do is attack two sources of the burdens on our, our climate from Seattle. One is transportation, which the majority of the greenhouse gases come from that burden on our climate, and the other is building efficiency. We are going to make meaningful changes on each of those fronts, working together with community leaders, my leaders from my government, with the city council, and others to come together to show that Seattle really will lead on our climate goals. Uh, one of the things that we're going to look at is improving our traffic and helping on climate goals by looking at and studying congestion pricing. We know it can't stand alone. We know it's a heavy lift that we have to engage people deeply before doing that. And we have to make sure that it is paired up with meaningful transit. Because we can't ask people to get out of their single occupancy vehicles unless there are meaningful options they have, whether that is buses, walking, bikes, or other public transit. So we will be working hand in glove to make sure that we improve those abilities for people to get out of their cars while looking for great incentives for people to also not drive into our sitter city. We are going to be looking to reduce our climate and air pollution from cars by really looking at carbon neutral electricity. Earlier this year, you went with us when we showed you our new, some of the new charging infrastructure. We want to move further. We want to get to a point where the whole city fleet can be electrified. 
where our ride shares, our taxis and others can be electrified. To do this, we have to not just have the new energy we have with City Light and others, but we have to work with our partners to make sure that we have charging stations throughout the city. Ideally, we would want charging stations to be more frequent than gas stations. We want people in every part of the city to be able to take advantage of the technology of the future, and we know that there are real barriers to uh, electrification, but both because of costs and availability of infrastructure. So as we build this in the future, we have to make sure that all parts of our city can be part of this future. Um, the other thing we know we're going to do is we got to look at buildings and building efficiencies. We've released our challenge pilot for 2030 where we will have some of the most efficient green buildings possible. We know it's possible. We know our carbon load can be better. And we're going to be really looking to make sure that we can set the bar for not just this area, but for the country and how we build and keep and sustain more uh, efficient buildings. We will also have the first in the country pay for performance energy efficiency pilot program. That also, we're going to have to implement that, but I thank Jessica for her leadership on this um, and also with the Billet Foundation who have shown how these, how we can have buildings that are not only efficient but are actually energy positive, not just neutral. We know we have to move us as a city away from our dependence on fossil fuels. One of the ways we have to do that is too many homes are still dependent on heating oil. So we're going to have programs in place to help people move from heating oil to more efficient and clean energy. I look forward to doing all of these things and, and stress that as we do it, we have to know as a city that all of this has to be done through the lens of equity. We must make sure that as we move forward in the new generation of technology, that we are making sure it's accessible for everyone in our city and really do this through the lens of a race and social justice initiative. Because if we do that, we can lift up everyone in this city and lead our nation forward. So with that, I think that I would like to also now introduce Council Member O'Brien, who has some remarks on, on these issues as well. After that, we'll hear from Sabrina. And then after that, Jessica. Am I going to wrap up or are you going to wrap up? I'm going to wrap up and we'll take a few questions and answers. So thank you very much. And Mike, your, your turn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so about a year ago, Donald Trump said he was going to withdraw the United States from the Paris Climate Accord, leaving the United States of America the only country on this planet not participating in this global effort to reduce carbon emissions. When that happened, the city of Seattle joined with other cities, counties, and states around the country to swiftly step forward and say, we are going to do our part. Despite what our president says, the people of the United States of America are going to participate in this global effort. The city council passed a resolution committing us to do that. And we asked Jessica and her team at the Office of Sustainability and Environment to come up with a path forward so Seattle can be doing its part. I am thrilled to stand here today with Mayor Durkin to see these bold announcements and commitments that we are making as a city of Seattle. You know, the people of this region have long been fighters, fighting to protect the Arctic from oil drilling, fighting new pipelines, fighting coal exports coming through our communities. But we know that if we're going to solve climate change, we also have to make changes right here in our community. And sometimes those are the hardest things to do when we're talking about changing the future. The commitments that uh, Mayor Durkin made today and that we're going to execute in the coming years are the types of commitments that are necessary for a city of Seattle to be the true leader on climate change. And I'm thrilled to be part of this city and I'm excited to working for with you all um, and all the people of Seattle to make this happen. Um, I wanna let uh, introduce uh, Sabrina Villanueva from uh, District 2030, which is a group of private, um, the private sector, private building owners who are doing some amazing work to make sure that the private sector is part of the solutions too. Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Sabrina Villanueva. I would like to thank Mayor Durkin, Councilmember O'Brien, and all of you here today for your efforts towards initiating a new chapter in Seattle's response to climate change. As Chair for Seattle 2030 District, we're, we are committed to harnessing the power of the private sector to really champion sustainability in the built environment. Programs announced today are really exciting and bold announcements it, it's a new opportunity to have a cool partnership with the city 
and we welcome the 2030 Challenge Pilot, which uses the district's goals as a measuring stick for incentivizing highly efficient renovations in return for deep green investments. These projects will lead to greater energy and water efficiency, stormwater management, as well as substantially lower carbon emissions for com from commuting. Our organization has worked very closely with the city to create an attractive and environmentally effective pilot. We are also excited that, the city, that Seattle City Light um, will be launching a groundbreaking program that will reward energy performance in a whole new way. Treating energy efficiency as a service and allowing building owners and developers to recoup their investments will lead to substantial energy savings. We are pleased to have contributed to the formation of this innovative approach. Seattle 2030 district members are contributing to meeting the critical Paris climate goals, and we look forward to working with the city to implement Mayor Durkin's new strategic actions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike and Sabrina. And I, I think the other thing that's important here and shouldn't get lost is we are one government working on these issues. That's one reason why we're joined by the head of Seattle Public Utilities, Mami Hara, by FAS, Fred Podesta, by our permitting people, Nathan, as well as Jessica and, and our leadership in City Light who are moving us forward. We know that we can't live in silos and that we have to move together as a city across all platforms to get us more ecologically friendly. It will be a challenge for us, but we're up to the challenge. I can remember the days when we first started having to separate garbage from recycling. And people said, no, it can't be done. <laughs> we did it. We reached our goals. We exceeded those goals. Then it was, no, now you got to pull out your compostables. And people are like, no, it can't be done. <laughs> We've done it. We can do this. Seattle has led. We will continue to lead. So with that, I'll take a few questions, if there are any. what exactly you're proposing here with congestion pricing? The congestion pricing, as you know, that there's a study underway with the Seattle Department of Transportation. Seattle is becoming a big city. We need to have a city in the future that is that kind of city where we squint our eyes and think, where do we want to be? And I think all of us want to be in a city that is easy to get in and out of, that's pleasant to walk around, to bike around, to shop, to have cafes. And so one of the things we can do is look at congestion pricing to make sure that when we enter a certain core of the city, that if you're going to be the person striving in there, you got to pay more money. Um, we can't do it alone. We've got to work with stakeholders. We've got to work with businesses. We've got to work with shops and small business owners. We also have to make real on the reality of transit. One can't work without the other. So we will study it, do that hard work, and look at how we use this as one of the tools to join some of the great cities in the, in the world who do this, that we travel to. We all think it's a, you know, we love it when we're there. Seattle's going to be that kind of city. Let's do it intentionally. What's your timetable, though? Because there's not light rail going through the city, and there's a streetcar that right now uh, in the center city is also on hold. You know, we're going to look at mobility as a network, and no one can look at any one prong of it and say, without that, we can't move. We have to look at it as a network. So we will do that. We will study all the options. The timetable is we'll do it as expeditiously as possible that we can have it make sense and work with the people who are going to affect it. Because you don't do it just to do it. You do it to be smart. But how can you justify congestion pricing at all? Are you escalating a war on cars? No, absolutely not. To, to the contrary, those people who will be driving in their cars that have to use their cars and those systems find that it's actually more efficient and more effective. What we want to do is get people out of single occupancy vehicles into other alternatives. To do that, we have to have other alternatives that are real. You know, there was a lot of questions, for example, this week on the new parking regulations. We made very clear that my position was, if we're really going to reduce the amount of parking because there's frequent transit service, we have to really believe that there will be frequent transit service. So our studies show more and more people are getting out of their cars, they're getting on buses, they're getting on light rail, they're biking, they're walking. If it's a safe and real alternative, if we make it a safe and real alternative, that will happen, so we have to do it in conjunction with that. Mayor, what are the real alternatives and is part of your study to look at some of those? We're looking at all those alternatives. We are building those types of infrastructures as we speak. As we know, we are going to be in a period of maximum constraint as we have these mega projects coming online. Those mega projects are going to create mega gridlock if we don't start doing something different and innovative. 
through a lens of equity where people who have the money to pay are the ones who actually get access to the downtown. That's why we have to make sure we do deep outreach to communities and we have real alternatives so people who don't have that ability have the same accessibility into our inner core in every part of our city. We also have to make sure that we're looking at routes we don't often talk about. It's really difficult, for example, to get east-west in Seattle. Um, so we're going to use, a, working with the council and others, we're going to look at creative solutions, both short-term and long-term, to provide more mobility. There is nobody, there is nobody, no matter how they travel right now, whether it's bus, car, bike, or foot, that isn't frustrated. And we know that, and what we want to do is address that so that as we work through these difficult periods of growth in Seattle, we get to that city that figures it out during that period of time. Madam Mayor, would there be I some sort of exemption to. for people who truly are small business, truly are low income, but need their car to conduct the business? Maybe it's a small cleaning service. I, I think it's way too early to talk about exemptions because we don't know what it's going to look like. We got to study it, we got to talk to people, and we got to listen to people. You know, I've said it over and over again, and I really mean it. It's not going to be top down government. We are going to listen to people and learn about where these challenges are, whether they're equity challenges or business challenges. And we're going to craft our policies to try to make this the best city for everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Wait, right? No, we're done.